Hello and welcome to Sunday Cartoons with Dan Letha. I am Dan Letha and uh, we're going to do something a little different today um, than I've done on this uh, Sunday cartoon feature. I've done a number of different types of videos. Today I'm going to do a behind the scenes video on a cartoon that has already been published to the internet. So you can actually go see this cartoon and I'll tell you how and where to, to see that in a little bit. But uh, I have a cartoon feature that I make for the Ministry Reasons for Hope. It's called Truth Jabs and I try to do one every week. And so um, this week when I was making this particular cartoon I thought why not record at least a part of my drawing this cartoon. Actually I'm inking it uh, for the most part. So um, that's what I'm going to show you today, and so here is the cartoon already underway, and um, I uh, I'm showing this at twice the yeah twice the speed, and so I don't actually draw this fast, but um, it was going to be an hour long otherwise. So this this video is going to be about 30 minutes, and I'm just going to kind of talk through what I'm doing. Um, I've already drawn this uh, wolf, and it has some sheep's clothing on top of it. And uh, so I've sketched those out in two different layers. Uh, the, the wolf has, the, you know, of course, the red ink. And I did the, the lamb, the sheep, in blue. And then um, what I'm doing here is I put a, another layer over the top of both of those. And it's a white layer. And then I, la I lowered the opacity so that um, I could see the, uh, the inks for the, the wolf and the sheep. Uh, clear enough, but I wanted to have another layer over the top of that that I could ink with my black pen, uh, my stylus for uh, this project, and um, I could see what I was doing very well, and, and yet the, the lines underneath would guide my pen. So uh, again, for those of, the, those of you that don't know, I'm inking with a, a Wacom Cintiq, and I'm using uh, Photoshop here, and... Um, what you're actually seeing too is just part of the cartoon. Um, like I said, the finished cartoon is currently residing on the uh, Reasons for Hope Facebook page. So you can uh, go check that out or um, I'll have to go check this myself, but it should be on the Truth Jabs face Facebook page as well. So you can go to either one of those two places and I would encourage you to give it a like and share. The, um, the image that I'm inking right now is only half of, um, of the cartoon. So I'm not really giving anything away. If you haven't seen the cartoon yet, um, you can't really tell what the cartoon's about. It does involve a lamb uh, or a, a, she a wolf in sheep's clothing. So that's kind of the, the start of the idea. And then I, I kind of take that further with the second panel. So that's, uh, that's what the full cartoon looks like. And um, I'm, again, just inking along here. Now when I'm inking, um, I've got my fairly tight guidelines underneath the red and the blue lines. And um, so I, as I'm inking here, I'm using that as a as a guideline but i'm making up my own lines as you can tell i'm not just tracing here um, i like to be spontaneous and keep it loose and um, some of the lines i'm following a lot more closely than others but especially here with the fur you can tell i'm just make, making my hand go and doing that uh, kind of that fur texture and so for that line i followed pretty close on the on the line here and uh, again, the, the, the lines underneath are just the guideline. So, and um, every so often you'll see me erase a line or actually I go Command Z and make that line disappear and then draw it again if I don't like it. So, um, but inking like this is a lot of fun and it, uh, it can be relaxing. Um, especially when you like the drawing underneath and I I happen to really like this um, this particular drawing I looked around online to see some reference for people that have done artwork for this type of image already and so I kind of gathered some ideas together and and then added my own spin to it so this uh, this might look 
similar to other drawings if you do a word search or an image search on uh, wolf and or a lamb in sheep's clothing um, wolf in sheep's clothing so um, so it's kind of similar but it's not the same and so that's totally legit and allowed and uh, I thank those other artists that have drawn other versions of this before that were inspirational to me um, again I wish I could draw this fast in real life but uh, this is twice as fast now this did go pretty fast though I mean Sometimes drawings are a, l a little slower and you kind of take your time more, but uh, I was I was kind of zipping along, having some fun. One thing that's important too um, is warming up before you get into a drawing like this. You don't want to go into it cold because sometimes you'll find, you know, halfway through, all of a sudden you're kind of hitting your stride and you think, oh, I'm going to start over because <laughs> the first part just didn't turn out all that well. So... You know, every line that an artist makes isn't necessarily magical and, and all of that. Um, I think a lot of people just think that it just falls out of our hands and our arms. Um, and it really doesn't. Um, it's just like anything. You've got to kind of be in the mode and be in the mood. And, and uh, sometimes I, I find that if my creative um, reservoir is is a bit dry that the artwork just doesn't come out the way that you want it to you're kind of forcing things and is you're just off so it's good to find some inspiration sometimes and I, I like to look at other people's artwork and find artwork that uh, just is is inspiring and not all the time it's not Christian all the time sometimes it's uh, non-Christian artwork um, I just saw a, an artist that is starting a book. Um, it's the story of Little Red Riding Hood. And it just blew me away. Um, of course, not a Christian story, but um, the, the artwork is fantastic. And so I'm, uh, I'm going to be following this particular artist as he makes this project to see what he's, what he's doing with it. And I hope to learn some uh, something from him too, and not just be inspired by him but uh to uh you know even even at my age and i've been in my career for you know over th about 30 years or so i'm still learning and still being inspired by other people and i will until um the day i die i think um, i love looking at other people's artwork so again i'm trying to keep it really loose and fast this fur is a great deal of fun to uh, to ink and you'll notice as well that um, I'm trying to give uh, a bit of flair to some of my lines. A lot of the lines are thick and thin. It's not just all the same thickness. And then I'm drawing in the, uh, the eyeballs and then I'll paint back in the reflection. Look how dead it looks without that reflection in the eyeball. And then you put that little speck of light in there and those eyes come alive. That's the same for people too. If if you uh, have a picture of a person and they don't have that little gleam of light in their eye, they don't look quite alive. And um, there's something special about that little little gleam that's very important. So I don't put it in there all the time, but um, a lot of the cartoons that I draw, I'll put that little gleam. Now I'm lightening the, um, the wolf inks and I'm making another layer and I'm going to ink the, the sheep now. Notice the thick and thin gives a lot of variation and interest to that line. If it was all the same thickness, some artists use the same thickness on their artwork and, and they look good. Um, I, I tend to favor the, uh, the thick and thin just because it just adds some nice zing to the, to the image visually. Um, I, I really like doing that. And it takes practice to, uh, to be able to do that. Um, one discipline that kind of helps with thick and thin lines is actually calligraphy. And uh, that's something that I've kind of experimented with over the years. Um, that, that thick and thin line for making strokes for lettering. And it's sort of the same type of thing with, uh, with inking lines here with this artwork. 
and then you get a feel for which line should be thick, which line should be thin, and um, the uh, the lines on the outside of the shape tend to be the thicker lines, and then I try to imagine where the shadow of the uh, the creature would be, or where the light source would be, and so the light source side tends to be the um, the lighter, thicker, or thinner lines, and then the thicker lines are where the shadow would be. Uh, again, I'm trying to imagine in my mind there would be like a light shining on this this lamb or the sheep and uh, or the wolf too, and so the thicker lines will go away from the light source. And just uh, trying to add some texture here. the 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 sheep's wool is uh, is an interesting thing to. Uh, to try to give that the feel of wool with the, the line work there so and I looked up some hooves on lamb on sheep just to make sure I was getting some things right even though it's cartoony it's based on something that's real and so um, I guess you know some cartoonists would say well it doesn't matter as long as you're kind of it says sheep visually who cares if it's super accurate well I do like a somewhat of a it is based on something real, so I don't want to draw like five toes on a sheep when they only have like a split hoof. So I, uh, I do do that diligence to uh, find out what it looks like. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm outlining the shape of the sheep. And what I'm going to do then is um, after this selection has been made, on a layer underneath the inks that I just made, I'm going to uh, fill in a, a shape and that will be the the shape underneath the the layer for the inks that um, will contain the color for the the sheep and it takes a little bit I didn't get it all quite right I'm gonna have to go back and touch up a little bit of uh, of my selection here but I'm trying to go fast because the selection part the, the inking parts fun to watch the selection parts a little boring so and uh, sometimes I'll use a, a red color here and that will help me see where I've hit the mark and where I've missed the mark so I've got some uh, a little touch up to do here so I'll fill in that shape right there and do my my coloring inside the lines and sometimes I went over the lines too so there's a few little spots that I could erase but I guess I skipped over that so now I've taken that uh, red shape that I made and I, I turned it into a white shape because, you know, the lamb is going to be, or the, the sheep is going to be white. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing with the wolf. So I'm going to pick a spot down probably on his foot. Yep. And I'm going to start outlining the wolf. Now the interesting thing here is that I, I didn't draw the top because... The, uh, the, the wolf has something laying on it, and so I felt like, oh, well, it'd be a kind of a waste of time to go and finish that. Although, the, um, the second panel has the same wolf in it, and the thing that was on top of the wolf, and I'm not going to give it away if you haven't seen the cartoon, go and check it out on Facebook. Um, but the, uh, the object laying on top laid a little bit different than the, the lamb or the sheep did. And so I had to go back and finish the top of the face of the wolf a little bit more than I have here. So, um, so you can compare that too and see, see what I'm talking about. But um, again, I'm just creating the outline, the shape of the wolf, and then this is going to be a layer underneath the inks. And I'll probably do a dark, well, I'll do the red first. Look at where I've missed, do my little touch-ups and oh and there's one spot there that i i filled in that i'm gonna have to go back and remove i'm gonna catch that in a little bit after i i fill in the shapes and correct where i've missed there i'm taking out some of the extra that i put on on that shape All right now i'm picking the gray that i'm gonna use boom he's dark <clears throat> And I wanted him to be dark <clears throat> so that the object on top would, would stand out more. And it worked real well on the first panel. The second panel, not as well, but uh, it still, still works. 
And so now <clears throat> I've created another layer on top of that gray layer so that those particular objects that I'm coloring in, the eyes and the nose, and I think the tongue and the teeth um, have their own layer for these objects. So if I go back and I want to change the, the coloring on the, the main body of the wolf, that gray layer, that any changes that I make to that, um, I won't mess up the, the teeth and the eyes and the tongue. So um, layering is a good thing for those of you that um, are learning Photoshop and it looks like oh this is a big program and it has a lot of things in it and those layers look confusing those layers are your friend <laughs> they will save you a lot of work if you learn how to use them and you make layers for individual parts of your artwork or whatever image you're working on and uh, you'll find that you can change and make alterations on the image very fast and easy. Um, if it were all on one layer, you could still make some of those changes, but it would be a lot harder and not so fast. So I, sometimes I get carried away when I make my images and I'll have, you know, a couple hundred layers on a, on a piece of artwork. Every little thing has its own layer. So it has its pluses and minuses. Organization of a couple hundred layers, whew, that can be a brain buster sometimes. So but uh, yeah, the claws have their own layer too. So going in and uh, oh, I'm gonna do that one again. I painted a little bit too much. So so my Truth Japs cartoons are more of an editorial type of cartoon, and um, I try to take imagery that um, people are familiar with and make comments. With a biblical worldview, but make comments on um, current issues for the most part, uh, or things that matter. Now I think I've noticed the uh, the tail part here that yeah I, that section should not have color in it. So I'm just selecting it and I'm going to hit the delete button. There it goes. So fix that. Now the tail has separation. And uh, what am I going to do next? So I'm just commenting on this video as we go here. Uh, I think I'm going to add some gradation, a little darkness, yeah, some shadow, some darker shadow to the under parts of the wolf. Give it a little depth, a little touch of not so flat, which makes it more interesting. Now, again, I'm I'm imagining that the light source is kind of coming from coming from the upper right. And so the if you imagine like a flashlight or the sun or whatever that light source is, it's casting light on the wolf, and I'm trying to imagine that light where it would hit on the surface of the wolf. And then when you do the shadows, you, you do the same thing. It's just you uh, you find the uh, opposite part of the wolf to uh, to darken even further. Which 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 parts are away from the uh, the light source to do the shadows. And so here I'm, I'm concerned with separating shapes and bringing important parts of the wolf out. I, I love his face. Um, his face has a lot of character to it. And I've been drawing those angry kind of cartoony eyes since I was in grade school. I remember drawing that, uh, that, that angry brow and that eye underneath. It's a simple little thing, but um, I fell in love with that when I was just a elementary school kid. All right, we're still adding some darks, I think, to the underside. I really want that that the under oh some detail for the fur. Okay, so this is on its own layer. Once I've added the uh, the gradations, the basic shape of the uh, of the figure. Now I've put another layer over the top of that, and I've uh, made a brush that is 74% opaque, so it'll still have some of the feel of what's underneath it. It's, you can kind of still see through the fur, but I'm um, trying to follow along with where the fur would be and give a, a dark fur. Um, I'm going to add some lighter fur in a little while, but uh, this is one layer. Some of the, the, the magic, if you want to put it that way, of illustration is the layering of the different aspects of what you're doing. 
the final result can look really complicated sometimes but it actually isn't so complicated it's just that the artist has gone through various passes of um, application of um, you know lighting or texture or or whatever it is and so when you put one layer on top of another layer on top of another layer all of a sudden it looks really complicated but there's only you know three or four or five different treatments of uh, of different things yeah that front leg needs a little more darkening so that it separates from the chin the under the, under the jawline of the uh, of the wolf detail takes time and uh, art artwork is a word for a reason because it's a uh, it's it's a lot of mind work it's a lot of solu solutions for problems that you see how am I gonna fix this how am I gonna communicate this I didn't sketch this out a lot before I did it so a lot of what I'm doing here is just first time through trying to uh, to figure out the shapes and the best way to make things pop and and uh, sometimes an artist will draw a sketch and do some figuring out of the form and the shading and and then when they redraw it in a more detailed fashion then they've they're already going into it sort of knowing where they're going so uh, not not is the case here I'm just kind of making stuff up as I go now the inside of that mouth needs some darkening so I'm going to darken that yeah, because it's more shadowy inside the mouth. As the tongue comes forward, it becomes more light. But uh, so, I'm not a physicist, but uh, physics matters. Real life lighting and what would happen in real life helps make your illustration make sense to the eyes of people, even though it's a cartoon. So studying real life things is is a real benefit to uh to your illustration skills and that's where practicing drawing comes in because you're looking at things and seeing how they work and and the more you can add to your uh your visual library of experience then um the more success you'll have as an artist now i'm adding some harsher highlights to the to the wolf and those are really making some of those uh, shapes pop out and highlights it's a lot of fun but again I'm, I'm doing that within the the framework of where that light source is coming from you always have to keep that in mind it's a good thing to practice too sometimes I'll take a shape and I'll imagine the, the light source on different sides of it and I'll just do the same um, exercise of putting in a light source but from different angles on the same shape so if I can copy that shape or redraw it and then re light source it it's it's good practice even drawing lettering if you've drawn uh, big boxy letters and then you put like a, a shadow behind it and you make it look 3d ish kind of um, uh, or sometimes you put light source on the on the letters too to make them pop out just the practice of figuring out where that light source is and where the shadows would fall on a shape you know if it's a letter or or whatever it is that's excellent practice so it doesn't always have to be um a, a drawing that you're doing this on it can be other simpler things but um but again it's that that brain practice of Okay, the light source is over here. This is where the light would fall. You're kind of imagining the the shape in 3D, even though it's very 2D on your uh, on your drawing board or on your computer or wherever it is. So just put, going through now, I'm putting in that um, lighter fur to uh, to really pop it out. So I started with sort of a mid tone gray on the wolf, and then I've added a dark part to it and then I've added a light now I'm adding the light part to it and so those three elements the the mid starting gray and then the darker shadows from that mid uh, that are darker than the mid tone and now the highlights 
And with those three elements, it really, really makes it pop out and gives your shape some good form. And again, trying to follow where the, the fur, where the line of the fur would be. And again, just having fun. Um, it, this is uh, very loose and and even in the shadows, I'm imagining like a kind of a light source, maybe in back of the wolf too, that would give some light to some of that shadowy part on the on the back to help it uh, pop out and not just disappear into shadow. All right, now I want to do the same thing with the lamb or the the sheep, but it's it's a bit of a different problem because it's white. So what color do I take to? Uh, to shadow the, the light wool and keep it light and fluffy. Um, it, it's a bit of a gray here, but I wanted to add some blue to it to give it more of a friendly, not so dull, uh, dull look. So it's, it's some gray with, uh, with some blue added. You'll see that in cartoons a lot, especially with the eyes. Um, and the eyes are usually white, and so illustrators will take this blue shape in a, with an airbrush and where the shadow of the eyeball, the roundness is, you'll see them uh, add like a, a stroke of, of this airbrush blue and that'll make the eyeball look very round, but very, very soft and it's not a harsh, um, a harsh blue or a harsh shadow anyway. So uh, let's see what am I doing here? Oh, I'm adding, okay. So now I'm, I want the, uh, the, sh the sheep to look like it's resting on the wolf and shadows are, are great for doing that. It, it will merge those two things together and you'll, you'll believe that those two are existing in the, same sp in the same space, that that sheep is actually on the wolf because of the shadow that the, the sheep is casting over the shape of the wolf. So, so once I've made that shadow then, what I like to do is add some um, or take away some opacity from the shadow and so that underneath shape that I've already made for the wolf will show through the shadowing a little bit and I really bring those two together. All right and now we're going to add some more detail to the to the sheep. So I've taken um that's 100% opacity, but it's a very light, uh, dark line, if you want to put it that way. It's, it's darker than most of the sheep, so you can see the line, but it's still a very light line. And I wanted to add some more woolly type of feel. Um, and I think that's working really well. Again, I didn't, didn't experiment with that beforehand, so I just kind of am making this up as I go. And, uh, it's good when you can kind of get it right the first time because <laughs> sometimes, you know, especially for presentation for something like this. Um, and it wouldn't be wrong if I, you know, did this like two or three times. Sometimes that's the way it goes. But uh, on this particular case, I happen to like what I did the first time around. That lamb is, or that sheep, I keep saying lamb, that sheep is looking very wooly. And off screen, I'm looking at some reference for some, some sheep, some photographs. And so I've, I'm trying to take little hints about what a sheep looks like from those photos. And some of it's pretty similar and some of it's not so similar. But again, trying to base the, base the artwork on something in, in reality, something that's real. And I got a color in the hooves. And I think on this, I actually did a couple different versions. I thought, well, the gray, let's, we got to add some brownish to it, make it separate a little bit from the, the, uh, the wolf. Now the background color, mm, I don't remember if I kept that or not. There's that eyeball coloring that I was talking about before. You've probably seen that a lot in different cartoons where it's, it's a blue stroke down the shadow side of the, the round eyeball that makes that, uh, makes that pop. So 
So there's our illustration and I think I'm done. So please check out the, uh, the finished cartoon on Reasons for Hope website, or not website, but the, uh, the Facebook page, and, uh, or, or Truth Jabs. And you can see the finished version of what this cartoon is. And if you like the cartoon, uh, please share and, uh, and check out some more of my other Truth Jabs cartoons in the future. But uh, also check out the ministry Reasons for Hope because we've got a lot of great resources um, for families and uh, especially for young people. We have the debunked videos that you want to check out. So um, awesome, awesome stuff. And I'm, I'm so thankful to be a part of this ministry. So um, thanks for watching and have a good weekend.